The legend of Easton Cowan continues, but is it enough to put himself in the untouchables category for the Maple Leafs? We'll discuss that more on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my lovely co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NHL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Might be using Game Time this weekend. Actually, my family's coming up to Toronto and they're thinking about potentially checking out the Jays game. So I told them, let's let's hold off. Let's not grab tickets. Let's wait. First day, day of. The closer you get to first pitch, the cheaper the tickets get. If you use Game Time and our promo code Lockdown NHL gives you twenty bucks off. Safe to say, we're gonna get some pretty cheap and good tickets on saturday so uh yes remember to use the promo code locked on nhl for 20 bucks using the game time app uh you could also use the game time app to get some uh to get some ohl tickets or i guess not ohl but memorial cup tickets down in saginaw next month to go see our guy easton cowan the cowboy it continues just to absolutely tear it up dave this guy went on a run like we've never seen here in the ohl final uh his london knights sweeping the oshawa generals four games to none they book a spot in the memorial cup um a 7-1 thrashing tonight to close it out a four-point effort from easton cowan he finishes the series with 15 points through four games this guy's unbelievable dave like the Leafs actually found a diamond in the rough, it looks like. It's looking like it. You know, as you said, we haven't seen really a prospect in the Leafs organization dominate like this in how long, right? I mean, like Nick Robertson had 55 goals that like the year that COVID got- happened and like his season got cut short and then he went through a bunch of injuries, didn't play a lot. And, you know, this year he finally actually stayed healthy for the first time in his pro career, which doesn't get talked about enough, by the way, staying healthy was actually a big key for him this year. And he mm-hmm. was on pace for 20 goals, but um, Easton Cowan seems to be kind of the full package. Cause it's not just the goals, it's the playmaking and it's his off puck play as well as just like a two-way force to be reckoned with uh in in junior hockey you know there's there's always going to be questions if you know he can translate this to the uh the nhl that's always going to be a question mark on on guys until they do it until they prove and show that they can but i mean if you recall looking back in preseason like easton cowan looks pretty good he scored a goal in his first game if you recall and he was like I think the very last player to get cut to make the, uh, when they made it to like the original or the, yeah, the uh, original fifth, uh, 23 man roster at a training camp. I think he was like the 24th guy on that roster who got cut. So they clearly like what they saw last year and the season that he had one OHL regular season MVP, and then followed it up with this playoff run where his London Knights just absolutely steamrolled through the entire playoffs. He ends up with 34 points in the playoffs through 18 games and wins himself the OHL playoff MVP as well. So regular season and OHL playoff MVP. I mean, the guy's unbelievable. Yeah, he's, again, like I don't remember the last time I've seen a player put up put up production like this right and again like the london knights have always been a model organization in the ohl we know that um they they kind of weren't in this like you know dominant stage like dominant position the last little bit they were kind of like you know 
it, within the same, I guess, stratospheres of the other teams. But Easton Callen just took his game to another level, and the London Knights are like, "Yeah, we know where <laughs> we're back in where we belong, essentially." And so, like you see the 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 different ways that he uh, that he dominates the game, right? He's not just doing it five on five; he's doing it on the power play. He's you know, he led the OHL. He led the OHL in shorthanded points this year. Yeah. I think if you're the Leafs, you love that he is playing in all differences. Like, I'm sure that him playing for London, what he has done under Mark Hunter and Dale Hunter played a big factor too in the decision to draft him because yeah. the London Knights are, are, are an NHL factory. How yes. many players have come through that system? Leafs, <laughs> Leafs took quite a few of those players you know, the last few years, right? They've uh, got a so- couple. There's a couple there. There's, 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 you know, Mitch Marner came out of there, and yeah. you know, obviously they brought in Max Domi, who was a Marner teammate. Uh, you know, Chuck, Nazem Kadri was a years ago in London Knight. Uh, Tavares had a cup of coffee with the London Knights, didn't yep. he, at the end of his career? Mm-hmm. So they, you know, they, they, there's a, a good history of of London Knights uh, becoming Toronto Maple Leafs, and you know, Brad Tree Living drafted Matt Kachuk, who was also a London Knight back in the day. So, you know, there, there's a, uh, yeah, a rich history of, of London Knights in the NHL and even with the Toronto Maple Leafs, but um, you know, it's, it's great to, to, to have a prospect like this uh, to be excited about because the Maple Leafs haven't really had one like this in a while. Like you, you're right there. There's, it's been a long time since I think the Leafs have had like an A plus prospect, somebody who you, really can't wait until next year for them to to you know have a chance to make the team and make make a legitimate impact you know because that's that's what it seems like Easton Cowan might be able to do here um you know I remember when he got drafted there was these comparisons where you know it was almost like a Braden point light kind of guy where it was someone who's a little undersized but very reliable defensively and has a little bit of a scoring touch and he's got an edge to him um and then since that, that was like his scattering report kind of at the draft. And since then he's put on this terrific offensive flair to him, a great, yeah. you know, great touch, good playmaker. I mean, the 24 assists in 18 games throughout the playoffs, 10 goals, um, 34 points in total in 18 games. I mean, the guy drives offense <laughs> 15 <laughs> points in his last four games in the OHL final. He drives offense and uh, is, is a two way 200 foot player as well. Relentless, relentless on the puck is, is, you know, a term that I, I keep reading about uh, when it comes to Easton Cowan too. So, you know, lots, lots of praise and lots of positivity uh, when it comes to Easton Cowan. And, you know, I hope that he could translate that into NHL success. You know, it's obviously not a guarantee. People who have success in the, you know, in the junior ranks sometimes struggle to translate, especially if they're not, you know, the the biggest of stature. I think I saw somebody when we were talking about it in, in the comment section on yesterday's video say, oh, remember Rob Shrimp? Yeah, Rob Trump didn't work out for him, but Rob Trump was just purely an offensively skilled player. This guy is strong on his skates and he's strong on a stick and he's got a good lower frame. He's a bit stocky. He's put on some weight. He's up to 185. He was drafted at 170 um, and he'll have another full summer, you know, to, to try and put some more weight on and maybe become more of a stockier player. Uh, you know, get to prepare himself to play against men, uh, possibly next year. He'll he'll have every chance to, because I do believe it's either OHL or NHL for him. I don't think the American League is a possibility. Um, so no. if, the way he torched the uh, the OHL this year, I don't know if that does him any good. You know, so there may be a situation where they bring Easton Cowan uh, and give him every opportunity at the very least, the nine game, uh, the nine gamer to, to see what he can do at the pro level. Well, that's it, right? I, I think you give him every opportunity in camp. Pretty much same thing as as this past year, right? Give him every opportunity to show that he belongs. And if he does, you got a good problem, right? Like. I don't think the Leafs are going to just etch out um, a roster spot for him. I don't think they never will really ever do 
do that for someone in his position, but they'll give. I think they'll give him every opportunity to do it because there's nothing said. There's nothing better than to have some of your own homegrown talent be a contributor. Contributor, you know, right off the bat. I know some people say, "Well, he's his." Age, you know, they talk about his age. You know how he nice. his size and all those things. To me. The NHL's what, changed. Have you seen what Logan Stankoven has been doing over the exactly. last couple of months in the NHL? Have you seen what this guy named Braden Point has been able to do over the course of his uh, his career at the NHL level? Travis Konechny, another guy who kind of was an Easton Cowan comparable uh, during draft season. Like, there's guys who are 5'10", 5'11", buck 85, buck 90, who have been able to carve out really good NHL careers and hopefully Easton Cowan can, uh, can do the same. We're now big London Knights guys though. Like come Memorial cup. Like we are, we are team Knights. We are locked on London Knights for the duration of that tournament for the week that that tournament will be going on. And we are big, big time cowboy fans. Just so you know, not the Dallas Cowboys, Dave, don't get your hopes up here. Okay. I'm not a Dallas Cowboys fan, but I am, Easton Cowan, the cowboy, big fan of that guy. Is he an untouchable? That's the question at this point. Is he untouchable? Because there could be a big offseason for the Maple Leafs this year to try and kind of retool things. Is he available via the trade route if the right trade comes up? Let's talk about that and kind of go through the rest of the Leafs roster and see who else is considered an untouchable and who, surprisingly, might be available if the right offer comes across the desk of Brad Trilliving. So we'll get into that discussion on the other side. And uh, a really interesting report coming out about Nashville possibly being interested in another former London Knight. We'll get to that as well. This is the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big one of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you. We are the hosts here for Locked On Leafs, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast. We've got new episodes coming out each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. That's right. The Leafs season might be over, but we still are bringing you daily Leafs coverage uh, all the way through the playoffs and even into the offseason. So make sure that you are subscribed to the Locked On Leafs podcast for that daily dose of Maple Leafs coverage. Uh, all right. So I want to get into a conversation about who would be considered untouchables for the Maple Leafs this offseason. Because I think that th it's an interesting conversation just because I think that list is probably different this year than it's been in the past. And I'm curious to get your thoughts as to, you know, who would be considered untouchable and maybe who would be available if the right trade uh, came about. So, you know, we'll get to Easton Cowan and where he sits uh, in a little bit. But why don't we start kind of up at the top, right, with the big boys and kind of settle on who for sure is untouchable. And then we could get into the the guys who are maybe in the, the wishy-washy area and have those larger discussions. But obviously, Dave, Austin Matthews ain't going anywhere, right? No, not no. at all. No, easier. I don't even entertain it. I hate the comments I see about it. I have seen many of those you comments. See comments about moving Austin Matthews? Of course. I mean, they're mostly trolls, but unless still. it's for like literally Connor McDavid. Yeah. Like, <laughs> which is not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So Austin Matthews is untouchable for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. That's not even really a debate. No one needs to have a, a lengthy conversation about it. Austin Matthews just signed a five-year deal. He's the highest paid Maple Leaf of all time. Uh, and there's a good chance, another conversation we could have shortly, that he could even end up with the captaincy uh, sh sooner rather than later. Uh, so, yeah, he's not going anywhere. What about the guy who he's been saddled up to for a very long time? 
Um, you know, obviously for the last five, six years, he has been an untouchable for this team and, and part of the core four and one of the core players. I'm talking about Mitch Marner, obviously. And up until this season, I think a lot of them would have deemed him as untouchable. Is he still in that category, Dave? Or do you think Mitch Marner uh, is is finally a guy that the Maple Leafs are willing to listen on this offseason? I think they're going to listen. I, You know, when you look at who the Leafs have already gave Matthews that side, the new contract. Willie also got the new contract as ironclad. John Tavares, now we keep hearing his oh, name. We'll get to all these players. Let's just focus on Marner. But, like, right? uh, but when I'm looking at those three guys... And then you put Marner in there, it all circles back to him. And like you ask every person I I've, I've talked to the last two weeks has been. So when are they moving Mitch Marner? Or what do you th- who do you think? Or you know, do we think Marner is going to get traded? It's all it's it's been a nonstop cycle about Mitch Marner, and there's reasons for it, and not just you know how he played in the playoffs. Okay even if you put that aside for a second, it's that next contract. You And we talked about this. There's just no conceivable way that it would make any sense for this team to go all in on another forward with all that cap money when you look at the rest of the roster and the fact that what I'm hearing and what we've been hearing the last few weeks, there are teams that actually still view Mitch Marner as an asset that the Leafs can get something back for. Yeah, as they should. I mean, like, I know Leafs Nation likes to sit here and, and crap on the guy, but he's still a top 20, 25 player yeah. in the NHL at the end of the day. So, yeah, of course teams are going to be, you know, knocking uh, and calling on Mitch Marner. He's a terrific talent. It's just in Toronto, it's it's just not working anymore. They've given it the old college try, and maybe he needs to go off somewhere and, and be the guy and be relied upon. That's where he'll get his money. That's where, you know, maybe get away from the media, free his mind a little bit, and then he can flourish there. But, yeah, for Toronto, uh, I don't think that he has the untouchables tag anymore either. Um, it, it's gotten to a point here where, uh, again, I think a lot of it has to do with the contract. To your point, he needs a new one. He could get one as soon as July 1st. But if that contract doesn't come and no offer even comes, if there's not really much discussion, I think that'll be pretty telling that they're probably willing to move on and they would be better off getting something in return via trade this off season in the summer than they would, whether it's mid season as a, as a rental or even worse, letting them walk for nothing at the end of the year next year. So yeah, I think Mitch Marner for the first time ever, uh, seems to be uh, a guy that the Maple Leafs are willing to listen on. What about Nylander, though? Do you think that the Leafs would listen on William Nylander, or is he also deemed an untouchable now? I wouldn't say untouchable. Like, if a team offers you something that's actually really good, like, they were looking to trade him last year. When they right. were, tra- right? Part of the reason why the contract sort of happened was because they really couldn't get a deal that made sense. Obviously, it's kind of hard when the guy's in this final year of the contract to really get something for him. Yeah. So I don't, I don't I don't know how many teams were lining up to pay Willie eleven million last summer either. And exactly. That ask, uh, a lot that scared away a lot of teams to make that trade. Right. And so I I think I mean that contract, I don't know how many teams would really want that contract right now. I, I, think still, like, I think he's untouchable. But the reason why I will say I'll, I'll add the untouchable part that makes him untouchable, who scored the last three goals in the playoffs for this team? Like, <laughs> he Boy, produces I mean, when your other stars, not, not, I'm not, I'm not just talking about producing, consistently, year after year, the one player we don't talk about not producing in the playoffs has been William Nylander. Right. Now I'll say this, okay? There, there, there's a caveat to every trade. Again, if the is he untouchable? Yes, is he untouchable? If Connor McDavid or Kale McCarr are on the table, then no. So let's just you know be adults here and just understand yeah. that there's about one percent of the league that 
you know, would actually uh, be trade worthy when it comes to William Nylander at this point. So for the most part, he's basically untouchable, I would say, uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. John Tavares. I don't think John Tavares is untouchable. No, I don't think so. If you were the Maple Leafs, would you approach him about potentially waiving his no move clause this summer? Only if you really get something that's worth doing it. Like, I don't think the Leafs should just go out and say, Hey, can we, can we just, I think they could definitely get something for him. Like he's still a valuable asset. And there are a lot of teams that will go after John Tavares. Well, the way that his contract works is after July 1st, he's only, what like a million dollars, like eight hundred. Him and him and Mitch are getting paid peanuts after their signing bonus kicks in for the July. Exactly. One. So like that's attractive to a lot of teams. They're getting it superstars, and, and well, Mitch is a superstar. Tavares down a peg now, obviously, but you're getting really good players at the very least. Um, and for those who are maybe lower on the floor, uh, you know. You, it's a good way to add cap at a very low actual price tag. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's two reasons to to add those two. But yeah, I, I think Tavares is definitely not untouchable. He he is definitely untouchable, I would say. It's just a question of whether or not the Maple Leafs, uh, with one year left on his deal, he's the captain. You know, Toronto born and bred, came home. Are they willing to even ask him to wave? Or are they... You know, for out of respect for what Tavares has done, uh, would they rather just, you know, say, no, it's okay. He's going to play out the year here. He's our captain. We're not even going to ask him to to waive the no move. I I would think like, if if that actually, if the Leafs were actually to move on for Tavares, I would be shocked. Yeah. I, I, I would be shocked just because for all the reasons you stated, he's a centerman. He plays. But if you move know, Tavares, I mean, you could theoretically then. Now, possibly keep Mitch. Possibly. But, but the thing is, is Tavares' contract's up. He's not getting paid more than what he's getting now. Mitch Marner's going to want to get paid more than he is now. Right, but if you could turn that money, like, how much more? He's making basically 11. He's easy. He'll get, what, an extra million, million and a half, probably? I mean, you could turn that 11 million bucks into... Uh, give give Mitch that extra million. Now you're talking ten. You get two decent defensemen for ten million dollars. I think they're gonna want to go a little more than two decent defensemen. Like you get a chance to add a little more, something a little more significant on the blue line. Well, like, okay, five million. You can add some pretty. I mean, you could add like a seven million dollar defenseman and then a three million dollar defenseman. You can add a significant piece. You, I was just averaging it out. Yeah. I, I I just think it's less likely with t- the Tavares route because I also think the team might consider going up to him and say, all right, what's your next contract if we want to keep you around in a lesser role? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Because I also think there's going to be a time where that's, that captaincy is going to get transitioned to Austin Matthews as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think so too. A lot of people seem to think that it could happen as early as this year which is interesting. And that's probably a conversation that we can get into on the pod at some point. I don't think today is mm-hmm. the day to do it, but we'll for sure get into that conversation over the next couple of weeks here. Um, why don't we take one more quick break? We'll come back. We'll get to a couple other guys who I think are on that kind of toe in the line between untouchable and not. Uh, and then uh, after that, there was an interesting report from David Pagnata on the least morning take today in regards to one team that might be interested in Mitch Marner. We'll tell you who that is also on the other side. It's Mike DiStefano with Dave Morris Sudi. You're listening to the Lockdown Lease Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Price on Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to puck drop with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from receipt, and the lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NHL tickets. Uh, they've got last minute deals, they've got uh, flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing. Views from receipt, and they've got the lowest price guarantee. Or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game Time ticket coverage. Uh, it is your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy 
in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying NHL tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, uh, create an account or redeem the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The Locked On Lease podcast continues on this Thursday. What is it? May 16th. Thursday, May 16th. Uh, it's uh, actually my cousin's husband's birthday today. I only know that because he's three days after me. And mine was three days ago. So that's why I know that. I'll have to shoot him a text a little bit later on today. Happy birthday to uh, to to Jesse. Actually, his mother-in-law listens to the podcast at Zia Maria. So, ciao. Zia Maria. Uh, all right, let's continue with our list of guys who may or may not be considered untouchables for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, so far, um, I think we've concluded that Austin Matthews is definitely untouchable. William Nylander is basically untouchable, uh, barring something really eccentric coming their way. Uh, but Mitch Marner and John Tavares seems like they're they are probably guys who at this point have fallen out of that category here in Toronto and the Maple Leafs will be willing to listen. So that's the the core four. But recently we've been referring to kind of a fab five and Morgan Riley has been deemed as a bit of an untouchable. Now he's got a lot more left on his contract. He's got six years, I believe, left on his contract here. Um, is Morgan Riley considered an untouchable for you, Dave? No, I don't think so. You think the Leafs would be would be willing to listen? Like by untouchable, I guess I would sit here and say, would the Leafs be willing to make a lateral move to trade Morgan Riley? When you look at uh, the playoffs this year, there wasn't anything from Morgan Riley's game that said, "Yep, he he changed the game or he earned his paycheck in a way." I thought he yeah. had a like he like last year. Really good playoffs this Best year, career. right? I thought that was going to springboard him to a f- great year. Didn't happen. Yeah. And I like I'm a huge Morgan Riley guy in terms of what he brings to the locker room, his candidness. You know, he he has the toughest, I think, toughest assignment on the blue line because I think he doesn't. He, I mean, he's never really had that stud partner to play with. No offense to Ely Labushkin, right? Like, I don't think, like, have the Leafs given him all the tools to be successful? I don't think so. But at the same time, we needed more out of Morgan Riley, and we didn't get it. And when you're looking at your number one defenseman, this is lacking a little bit. So, I like, again, uh, I don't know what the, what any, a team would definitely go after Morgan Riley for sure. I just don't know what type of deal they could offer that would make it worth moving off of Mo and then realize that we got to replace Morgan Wally as well. Yeah, I think I still have him in the untouchables category myself. I think, you know, he's a guy who, for all intents and purposes, like almost is the captain of this group. Like I know Tavares wears the C, but Riley is, is the guy who always has an A on his chest where Matthews and Marner uh, alternate that assistant captain's role uh, or alternate captain, whatever the hell it is, um, based on home and away. So I think what Riley brings to the team off the ice is is special, and he's he's a meaningful part of this group. But I also think like the Leafs don't really have anyone like him either. Like if you move off of Morgan Riley, you know it, it it's going to be extremely hard to go out and find a, a good puck moving defenseman like this. I wish he had a bomb of a shot because if he did have like an Evan Bouchard bomb, you know, this guy, he would be perfect for, for, for many, many teams. And obviously the Maple Leafs, but you do wish that like your number one puck moving defenseman was a threat on the power play also, but he's not really. And that's the only thing that kind of holds Riley back from being like a number one for me. Uh, he, I've always looked at him as a top pair guy, but more so a number two than a number one. And I think that's a, because he's, he's not like exceptional on his own end, but also doesn't have that, uh, you know, shot threat, uh, from the point, whether at five on five or on the power play. 
So, yeah, but I still think that he's someone who the Maple Leafs will not be be looking to move at all. And it would take it would take a a ransom to to make that deal happen. So, yeah, like I'm not I'm not. Well, I know, I know, I know. But like, like, I mean, the word untouchables is very it's, it's like it's if someone were but... if someone were to put a gun to me and say, like, would you trade Morgan Riley? F- like, is there no way you would ever trade Morgan? I, I would say no, there's no way I would never like i would i wouldn't i would consider it but i'm not gonna be like yeah this guy needs to go right like so i'm goes, not that, i'm that not advocating to, that the leafs look to move him yeah like that goes back to the okay clearly we're thinking of like in a lateral situation yeah. i mean if if colorado's like hey we're we're looking to move kel mccarr he's just not fitting in with the culture in the locker room anymore you want to do a one for one for riley yeah of course he's available now but like yeah. lateral moves like i don't know i not sure Morgan Riley is someone that the Maple Leafs will be looking to move on from. Here's another one that I also think is actually considered uh, untouchable at this point. Jake McCabe. I think Jake McCabe's untouchable. Oh. I don't think the Leafs will be yeah. entertaining many offers this summer if, if teams call to try and pry him away from Toronto. I mean, he's got another year left on his deal at two million bucks and he's turned into this team's number one shutdown defenseman who excels at that job and you know can kill penalties and he brings a a ruggedness that you know this team obviously lacks on the blue line also and it's what true living's will you know trying to build up but i think you look at jake mccabe and the stellar playoff that he had this year uh for me he is definitely an untouchable especially at that aav that cap hit at two million bucks for sure I just remember when the Leafs were making the decision to keep Justin Hall and in the expansion draft, or even just keep Justin Hall in general. And Kyle Dubas came and says, well, where are you going to find a guy who does all that for the price that, that Justin Hall does it? Well, he did say a right shot, though, which McCabe yeah. is not a right shot. Plays the right side, but he's right. not a right shot. To yeah. be fair. This is a case where where are you going to find what Jake McCabe does Granted, the Chicago Blackhawks helped in that regard, mm-hmm. but the Leafs also paid for it. But mm-hmm. even I, I'm trying to remember what was his original cap hit four million four. bucks. Even four, four million bucks, I would pay four million bucks for Jake McCabe as well. Yeah, he's a top four defenseman who plays the right way. And all intents and purposes, they, I've heard a lot of good things about him off the ice as well. They were talking a lot about how he. You know, it, he kind of really stepped up in the leadership role during the playoffs. Yeah. Those are things I think that are very important. I've, I'm actually, I don't know why I'm doing this to myself, but I'm going back to watch the All or Nothing uh, Leaf stock on Amazon. You know who yeah. I really <laughs> wish the Leafs were able to have, still have was Jake Muzzin. Well, that's what Jake McCabe was supposed to be the Muzzin replacement, and, right? And he that's why, it, like, has turned into that. It took a bit. Yeah. It took a bit, but he has turned into that. Yeah, so like that's where, I, yeah, like he's brought lo- similar characteristics that Muzzin brought. Uh, so yeah, I think he's, I think he'd definitely be an untouchable for me. Okay, really quickly, we'll we'll wrap in these four young players, these uh, prospects, and I'm curious which ones you deem as untouchable for the Maple Leafs: Matthew Nyes, Joseph Wall, Easton Cowan, and Fraser. Minton are any of those guys considered untouchables for you? I would consider Cowan an mm-hmm. untouchable for me. Nyes it was getting into that territory for me. Nyes is interesting. Just... Nyes is interesting. And the only reason why I would probably hold off from calling him untouchable is if there's a lateral move to bring in like a defenseman, a right. right shot defenseman. I think it'd be worth exploring um, because I think there's other guys who could do things that, that, you know, Matthew Nice has done. Now he had a great season. Don't get me wrong, but if you can get yourself like a legitimate, you know, right side, either shut down or puck moving defenseman for Matthew Nice, like just kind of a, a hockey deal, if you will. Um, I think it'd be an interesting, interesting conversation there. I'll also add, like when the rumor deal was for Brandon Hagel and Matthew Nice would have to be included. I would have considered that deal because we know what you're getting in Brandon Hagel, and Hagel was is a pretty decent fit and a good playoff performer for Tampa. 
I think he had like he had thirty goals this year. Hagel, I believe. Although yeah. he's making a lot of money, like he's he's well, making like he over is. six million. But yeah, right. Um, yeah. So I, again, Joe he, Wall. Joe Wall is uh, is he untouchable for you? I would say so because you got to be very careful when you're moving a goaltender because he's got a good contract. He's young and he's got a lot of potential. The only concern. And everyone's brought it up is the injuries. Yeah. But if he can think, sort that out. But I think that's what would make make him like not untouchable. Trade. Yeah. Like if you could if if you're moving him, let's say he's in a deal and you're getting a legit goaltender back, like let's say Markstrom is available, right? Like you got Joe Wall and I don't know, whatever package, but they oh, want Joe Wall because they man. want they want another young goalie to kind of come back and and you know pair him up with Dustin Wolf. Like at that point, Joe Wall is available for me, right? So he's not you, untouchable. You're you're doing it only to get that upgrade, to throw him in for an upgrade. You're not Throwing a man to go and get a defenseman. You're doing it because you need a. Oh yeah, because you need a goalie. <laughs> like, yeah, right. He is your best. I, I just look at this Leafs team. Like they don't have, like they do have guys in the system, but no one knocking on the door. That's right. the other part you have to consider as well. Joseph Wolf's here. If he can get that injury stuff sorted out, I think he's becomes a like a very valuable asset for this team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and you said Cowan is, but Fraser Minton, no. Right, not untouchable, Minton. No, because I don't know if Fraser Min. Like, he doesn't have the ceiling that the other guys have. Like he could, but nothing. He's being that... touted as like a like third line center. Like that's what his his ceiling is. That's what his projection yeah. is. Like this guy's gonna be a really good third line center. It's like okay, that's valuable, right? The Maple Leafs didn't really have a third line center this year. They kind of just were forced to play David Camp up the lineup a little bit and they had to play Domi there at times, but in terms of being a matchup center. So like, yes, that is a valuable position that the Leafs desperately need. However, mm, if something comes available and and they ask for Fraser Minton and it, it makes your team better, there's a blue liner out there or there's a goaltender out there and they ask is Fraser Minton, I don't think I'm going to lose sleep if he's included in in, in a deal. Uh, no. So I, I would say he's he's definitely not in the untouchables. So I think so far, like we're we're looking at basically Austin Matthews, um, William Nylander, uh, Easton Cowan as for sure's, and Jake the, and Jake McCabe and Jake McCabe as for sure's. We both kind of debated Tavares and Riley, um, but everyone else, I guess, would be kind of fair game, which is really mm-hmm. really interesting uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, quickly. Just wanted to to note because obviously Mitch Marner we discussed as being a guy who could be available, uh, and the Maple Leafs might be willing to listen uh, on on uh, calls that are made for him. And David Pagnotto was on the Leafs morning take earlier today, and he was talking about the Predators potentially being a team that has interest in Mitch Marner. They had interest in the past, and uh, apparently said if he ever becomes available, make sure you give us a call. So that's interesting. I would think uh, the Predators were a team that, you know, wh- when I'm going through trying to make mock trades or whatever, they were a team that kind of came up. And I'm kind of looking at whether it's UC Soros or maybe Yaroslav Askarov, if you want to roll the dice on a project or a prospect goaltender. Uh, but as like kind of the main pieces, like they've got two good goalies. One of them they probably would be willing to move on from in a Mitch Marner trade. You know, it could be the main piece of a package. You can add a draft pick, prospects, whatever, on top of it. But that's a very interesting, uh, interesting team based on the goaltenders that are sitting in Nashville right now that may be available in a deal like this. Yeah, I mean, Nashville's a lot of people are looking at the UC Soros. I, I again, I always tell people to. Ca- throw caution to win as Saros's age and what he's going to want in his next contract. You have to be careful on that I when you're doing know. that. Like goalies, goalies don't make a lot. Uh, you know, Connor Hellebuck is about to start an eight year deal. He's making, making over, eight, over eight. Saros isn't going to make eight. No, he's not, but he'll, he'll command. It's not much the term. 
It's the term for me. Sure. That's what. It, that's where teams get in trouble. It's a term, but the Maple Leafs, the way that they can structure things, it becomes less of an issue, right? Right. But just yeah. don't give him a no move clause. That's all I'm going to say. If you ever do a deal for a goalie, don't give him uh, a no move clause. Well, yeah, right? probably will. But but I think I think for me, the Preds have a lot of young guys, young prospects, or younger players. I would definitely look to get if you're going to do a deal for Mitch, because they're not going to give you, you know, Forsberg. high, right. They're not going to say, Oh, Forsberg. Yeah. Here's Roman Yossi. Okay. <laughs> Sign. Hey, maybe Yossi's, Yossi's a little, a little on the older side. Maybe they would be willing to, uh, to, to move on from, uh, from him and a bit of like a, a Shea Weber for PK Subban kind of, kind of trade potentially. I remember that one. Yeah. It's the same team. Yeah. Same I, team. I, I haven't really taken a, a look at the entire depth system, like prospect system of the Preds or even their minors, but like yeah, they got Yoakam Camel, Luke Evangelista, who's young, playing with them. Uh, Cody Glass is is there. Um, Zachary Larue is a decent young prospect. They've got the twenty second overall pick this year, but I don't think like the Maple Leafs will be looking for. They'll be looking for quality over quantity. Yeah. Is the thing here. So you're gonna want some real serious bona fide pieces if you're trading, you know, Mitch Marner, which is why I think one of the goaltenders, maybe you can get that first round pick and another player like Dante Fabro, who had a nice bounce back resurgence season with them this year. Big right hand shot defenseman. Um, you know, he's somebody who kind of fits the mold of what Brad true living is looking to build on the back end. Yeah. So possibly he could be part of this trade. We'll have plenty of time to do our Mitch Marner mock trades over the course of, uh, of the off season here, Dave. So we can look into it a little bit more seriously and, and maybe have a full episode, Mitch Marner mock trades. That, that does sound like something that you and I would have a lot of fun doing. So I think we could probably carve out an episode over the next few weeks of, uh, okay. of doing that. So we can revisit this conversation uh, at that point. But I think that's going to do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all po- uh, podcast platforms, including up on YouTube and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore more assuming follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We we'll back another episode for you guys tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.